Hello bookworms! Today I'm going to be sharing my end of the year TBR. I decided that this would be kind of a fun video to film because number one, one of my like big goals for this year was to really like cut back on my physical TBR, which you would never know if you watched my October book haul. I think I bought more books in October than I have in like any other month of the year and like some of them combined. I still have my haul over there so that's why I'm looking in that direction but I haven't added that to my spreadsheet yet so I'm just gonna like ignore that for now but without my October haul I'm actually in like a pretty good place. So like as of today my TBR I think I have 38 books that are pre-2024 purchases. I have 61 books that are 2024 purchases and then I have 61 books that are next books in a series. So I don't count like next books in a series toward my main TBR. Once I like will read one, then the next book will get shifted, like added to the TBR and subtracted from the series TBR. That's just a system that like works very well for me. I've talked about it a little bit in some other videos. I think I actually talked about it most recently in like the bookish like chatty video that I did. But that means that like my 2024 TBR plus my pre-2024 TBR is under 100, which was my goal for the year. So actually my goal was to get my pre-2024 TBR down to 100 and I'm like well under that. So that is really exciting. Goal met. Never thought that, that would happen in a million years. And then I'm essentially going to have the same goal for next year to get my pre-2025 TBR down to under 100 because once I add these 2024 books to the pre-2025 TBR, it's obviously going to go back up. So all that to say, my focus really for the end of the year is to just continue whittling away at my physical TBR. I'm making a really strong concerted effort to not read any books that I don't already own physically. Really hard because there are definitely things I want to read and it's especially hard because you'll notice that I don't have any thrillers on this TBR that I've set forth and that's because I really don't buy thrillers. I really tend to read those from the library. If I really love it then I'll buy a copy for my shelf but I honestly like don't have that many because I feel like even if you're really enjoying a thriller, like the end can really like make or break it. So I tend not to have many thrillers on my physical TBR, even though it is one of my favorite genres to read. That being said, I'm going to focus on what I own. Okay, so I've broken it down into genres and I'm obviously going to start with fantasy because fantasy is my favorite and that is what the bulk of these books are from. So the book that I think I'm most excited to get to that I've been itching to pick up is Fool's Errand by Robin Hobb. There's like no doubt that Robin Hobb writes some of the best fantasy in existence, but I do really like spreading out her books because I just like I know that I can just like count on it for a four or five star read. Even like if they're a four star read, I just love them so deeply. So I never want to like read them all back to back and then be done. Like that would be devastating <laughs> to be done with Robin Hobb books. So next up in my Robin Hobb journey, Realm of the Elderlings journey, is the first book in the Tawny Man trilogy. I kind of have been like reading one series a year. So last year I read Farseer, this year I read Live Ship, but every day I come home and I look at my bookshelf and I'm like, I really wanna read another Robin Hobb book. So <laughs> I'm putting this on my end of the year TBR. If I don't end up reading it by the end of the year, I definitely will read it in January, like without a doubt. But I can foresee myself reading it in the next two months because I really, really just want to continue with these. They're so excellent. This one returns to the world of Farseer. We're going to see some of the same characters that we got to know in the first book, but since there's already six books before this, I don't want to spoil anything for those who haven't yet started their Robin Hobb journey. And if you haven't, like, what are you waiting for? These are perfect. <laughs> Very much looking forward to this. Next up, I would like to read The Mime Order by Samantha Shannon. This is the second book in the Bone Season series. I really want to, like, stay on top of reading these because I have these gorgeous editions from The Broken Binding. So this is the second one and I did order books three and four through them and I really want to have this second one read before books three and four get delivered. I think I saw they posted an update the other day that Samantha Shannon actually finished doing the tip-in pages, like the signed pages for them. So I imagine it won't be too long until they're shipped. So I'm actually thinking I'll probably read this one within the next like couple of weeks. We're following a, a character named Paige who is a clairvoyant, which is basically like an illegal ability to have within this 
world <laughs> that the book takes place. She ends up in Oxford kind of like a little bit stuck. Like she gets like kidnapped and like taken away from her usual life and infused into this society of people that have like abilities and these people are like getting them to use their abilities like for them. But nobody knows like what Paige's ability actually is. She gets away with it by seeming like she has a different ability because people have always found clairvoyance to be extremely dangerous. So once she gets in there, she does get close with some other people and there's like a bit of like, you know, some displeasure with the current system that is expressed and a little bit of an upheaval that starts to happen like toward the end of book one. So I'm really excited to see like what's going to happen next in this world. I really like all of the historical places that are involved in it. I just think it's really fun. Like it primarily takes place in London, but like all of the very well known like historic sites and touristy sites and stuff. I was very entertained by book one and I'm really excited to keep going with Paige's story. I think there's supposed to be like seven bone season books or something and and there are four that are currently out and book five is coming out next year. So ideally, I would like to catch up either right before or like shortly after book five comes out. But yeah, I'm hoping that I like this one as much as the first one. Next up is a book that I'm like basically ashamed that I haven't read yet. And that is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. I was so highly anticipating this book. And I also just really love this fairy loot edition. I think it's super beautiful. And all of my friends who have read it have sung its praises and told me how much I'm going to love it. And I just keep not picking it up for some reason. So I really want to fix that. And I really want to read this before the end of the year. It kind of feels like a very good like wintry book, like kind of cozy. It has like a little bit of an academia angle to it because I believe Emily Wilde is going and like trying to write this book all about fairies and has to kind of gain their trust to like find information. I think she, is she curmudgeonly or someone else? Maybe one of the fae is curmudgeonly. Emily is not very good with people. So Emily is not very good with people and she has to kind of like get a little better if she's gonna write this book. And there's a guy named Wendell. I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up being a fairy. I have no idea, but that's just my guess. <laughs> and I think that they have like a little bit of a romance. So I'm really excited to read this one. Then I would like to catch up on the Crowns of Nyaxia series. So I'm up to this second book, which is the Ashes and the Star Cursed King. I read the first book and then last month I read Six Scorched Roses, which is the novella that I believe takes place like between these two books. I loved the first book. I loved the novella. I don't know why it took me so long to pick that up, but it definitely gave me like the momentum to keep going. And now I'm like really excited to pick this one up very soon. And again, I really just want to like read it and be caught up before the third book comes out, which is happening really soon. And I already ordered my... I will create edition of that one to match these. So I definitely want to have this read before that one arrives. Kind of preemptively lower that series TBR, if you will. But this book, just in case you are not aware, it is about vampires. And in the first book, we are following a character who is the daughter of the Vampire King, but she's actually human. And she's going to be competing in this tournament in order to like win the title and like become really important like in the eyes of the vampire court but there's all of these like court politics and she ends up kind of teaming up with this guy who is like the love interest and he's somebody from like an opposing kingdom so it was just really fun like and I really like the writing style it is very like gothic and vampiric and like it really just worked for me so I'm really excited to read this next one then I would like to read What the River Knows by Isabella Banez I also want to read the second book in the series which is What the Library Hides and this is a duo the second book is coming out really soon and that's actually why I've been saving this one so that I could read them like back to back, remember all of the pertinent details that I need to remember. I've been really highly anticipating this because it just sounds so cool. It's like an Egyptian inspired fantasy and we're following a character. Oh, it's also, they say it's like kind of like The Mummy, which I love that movie so much. So we're following a character whose parents kind of like mysteriously disappear. And then she goes to Cairo with her uncle, who's like her new guardian. And she realizes that there's like more to her parents' disappearance than she's been led to believe. And she has some kind of like artifact that her dad gave her before they disappeared. That like leads her to like unlock some kind of magic going on in Egypt. It just sounds wonderful. And I'm really, really, really looking forward to the series. I could foresee this being like a favorite duology. 
again, I've said it like a couple times, but I feel like I've been having such good luck with YA fantasy recently, and I just have such high hopes for this series. Then I would like to read The Wren in the Holly Library by K.A. Lind. This is the first one in a series. The cover of the second book has recently been revealed, and it's really beautiful, but I'm really hoping to like this. Partially, this is like a cover situation. Like, I just really love, love this cover. I really love the cover. This is the Fairy Loot Edition, but I really love the cover of the like original published one as well but I just like this bookshelf and everything so I like haven't read the synopsis or anything and my interest in this is purely based on the aesthetic reel that Fairy Loot posted specifically there were vampires that were posted so I know to expect that and obviously like this black cat is really cute and I'm hoping that he plays a part in the story too just look at that this is definitely one where I know like the least about it of any book in this pile that I've talked about. I kind of just like want to go into it blind and not really have any expectations. I feel like I haven't really heard anyone's thoughts or feelings on it, so I truly just have no idea what to expect, but I know that I do want to read it before the end of the year. Then I would like to read Wisteria by Adeline Grace. This is the third book in the Belladonna series. It's the concluding novel. And I really enjoyed Belladonna. I absolutely loved Foxglove and I particularly liked Foxglove because there was a new perspective that was added and I really liked that character. And I feel like <laughs> this is Blythe's book. So I really think that I'm gonna love, 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 love Wisteria. I'm really excited to read this one. This is another YA fantasy that it's really endeared itself to me. I really like all of the titles and it's also like, gothic fantasy. It's very atmospheric. Like you just really feel like you are there and you're in the past and such a fun series. And in the first two books, there are like murder mysteries. So I imagine that there's going to be a murder mystery to kick off book three too. Three two. <laughs> book three as well. Just really excited to finish this one. And then not only will I be able to take this off of my physical TBR spreadsheet, but I'll also be able to move this series to my completed tab, on my series spreadsheet. And nothing makes me happier than being able to update two spreadsheets with one book. <laughs> I would also like to read The Spell Shop by Sarah Beth Durst. Honestly, the only reason that I haven't read this yet is because I've had it on hold at the library since it got released and I'm still waiting. Like that was in July and what is it? It's basically November. So I've been waiting months and months and months to read this book and I'm just as excited as the day that I put it on hold and the day that my physical copy came in the mail. This one follows a witch. It's like a cozy fantasy, cozy romanticy or whatever. She is a librarian that gets like driven out of the library that she was in charge of and she takes refuge in this other area and then she ends up having these like berries that are growing at her little cottage and I believe they're like a little bit illegal but she starts like making them into jam and selling them to the local bakery and I think she has like a nosy neighbor that's most likely the love interest but it sounds really cute and this is one where like I just want to live in this cover like I would be so happy to just like pace up and down those steps all day and like pet that little baby dragon that's going on there so yeah I've been dying to get to this one and like I just need my library hold to come in really soon and the reason that I read ebooks versus physical books most of the time is that I do my best reading in the morning and like I wake up at 5 a.m. every day and I read for a little while before I start getting ready for work, but Andrew is still asleep then. And whenever it's not summer, I can't just like read a physical book. I do have one of those like neck lights so that I could technically read, but it's like not the most comfortable. So it's just easier to read on my Kindle because then it's already lit and I'm not disturbing him. So yeah, I'm, I'm dying dying for this one. And then the last fantasy book that I have on my list that I actually like impulsively grabbed at the end, it wasn't on my original draft of what I wanted to include, is A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. I love Rebecca Ross's Divine Rival series so much, Letters of Enchantment duology, and I really want to read her adult fantasy duology. It sounds so good. 
Also, these covers are like so cute. It follows a bard who gets summoned to his home because all of these like girls have gone missing from the island where he's from. He gets summoned home because it's his childhood nemesis that thinks that he's like the only one that can like help find these girls. So he goes back to help her and there are like these elementals and the only way to summon them is through a bard's magic and Jack obviously is a bard. So he does that and like asks if the girls can be returned as him and Adara are like investigating Getting this mystery of the missing girls, they end up finding out some like darker old magic kind of secrets that are lurking beneath the surface of their island. And I imagine that's going to be the big mystery of book two. So really, really excited to read this duology and also really excited that it is completed and I can read them pretty close together because my memory is just not what it used to be. And I really do better reading books closer if they're in the series. <laughs> then moving on to my romance category. So my absolute number one priority when it comes to romance, now that I've finished the Bridgerton series, I'm just finishing up the Maple Hills series. I'm almost caught up on Allie Hazelwood books. My main, main focus is to finish the Gold Rush Ranch series by Elsie Silver and to begin and potentially complete the Chestnut Spring series by Elsie Silver. I read two books in Gold Rush Ranch so far, really enjoyed both of them, so I'm really excited to read the next two, but I know that Chestnut Springs is the more popular series, so I'm also really excited to dive into those and like be fully invested in this cowboy romance world. I've been finding them to be so much fun. It's something I never thought that I would be interested in, the same way that I never thought I would read like seven hockey romance books within a year, but here we are. So this is for sure like my thing. And I'm really, really, really looking forward to reading more of these. Everyone just like can't stop talking about Elsie Silver. And I just want to be able to be part of the conversation more so than I am now having only read two books. These are by far my top romance priority. Next, I would really like to read a novel love story by Ashley Poston. This is her newest adult romance. It came out in the summer. I want to say it came out in like June or something, but I really want to read this before the fairy loot edition goes on sale, which by the way is like one of the most pretty color combinations of books that they've ever done. It's so gorgeous. So really hoping to love this one. It hasn't gotten as good of reviews as Dead Romantics and The Seven Year Slip. And I actually have to say I wasn't as big of a fan of The Seven Year Slip as I was of Dead Romantics. So I'm really hopeful that I will enjoy this one because the premise does sound really good. Our main character is someone that like loves books. Like she loves especially reading romance books. There's I think one series in particular that she's really interested in. And her book club is planning like a retreat where they, you know, go on vacation together and read. And while she's on the way there, I think her car like swerves or her car breaks down or like something happens, but she ends up in the town of her favorite romance novel series and interacts with all the characters, gets to go to all of the cute like stores. It's one of those like small town romance kind of series. So it's basically like the dream to get to go and like see what it's like. I imagine she's gonna fall in love. I think she falls in love with like the owner of the bookshop or something. So like, it sounds really good. So I'm like really hopeful that I will like it a lot. Then I would like to continue the Dream Harbor series. The next book I have to read is the Cinnamon Bun Bookstore. And then the book after that, I also just recently got in the mail and that is The Christmas Tree Farm. So this one I'll probably read in November since it still has those like autumnal vibes. And then this one I'll save for closer to Christmas. I don't know if the last one comes out before the end of the year or if it comes out next year, but I think that one looks like it's gonna be kind of springy. These are such quick reads. They're small town romance. The first one was not my favorite, but I liked it enough that I want to keep going and they're just so like quick and so mindless. So th these will be fun to read between some of the fantasy books that I have planned. And I'm also hoping like maybe I would like these better because I felt like the first book was almost like too similar to Love Light Farms. So I'm hoping that these will kind of be like more their own thing. And then if I manage to finish all of those romances that I've just mentioned, the other romance series that I really want to start and kind of like get invested in is Catherine Cowles's Lost and Found series. These are romantic suspense books and the only romantic suspense that I've really read is the Eden series and I really enjoyed that. So I think that I'll really enjoy this too. I know my friend Alexa and my friend Rachel both have read like 
10 of her books this year because they ended up loving her work like so much. So I have a feeling that I'll probably be in the same boat since we all tend to have like a lot of overlap when it comes to the books that we like. It's just like so funny to me because I love thrillers. I love romance, but it never occurred to me that like romantic suspense would be appealing, which makes no sense because it's just like two things that I love. So I have really high hopes for the series. I'm really excited to read it. It also has kind of that like rural cowboy-ish feel to it, I think. That's like the vibe I'm getting from this like mountain going on here. But yeah, really excited to start these. I've really been wanting to prioritize her books, but I only have the one of them. So I'm like trying to really focus on what I have first before I like read this and then need to buy the next ones. <laughs> so those are all the books that I have on my end of the year TBR. I'm sure that there are other things that I'll end up picking up too, like especially just depending on when some of my library loans come in, but these are definitely like the things on my physical TBR that I'm the most excited to get to before the end of the year. So let me know what it is that you feel like you cannot possibly end 2024 without reading. I think I will be filming a news video at some point, but it's probably going to be before I move. So there won't be like any books behind me. It'll be really weird, but we'll just go with it. And then after that, like a, you know, regular sit down video, I should be in my new space, which will be really exciting. So I will see you guys then. And that's all that I have for this video. And I will see you guys in a new one. Bye.